Hi everyone, welcome to Contemporary Math. Today we're talking about subsets. And so what we're doing today is we're taking a look at how two different sets can relate to each other. And a subset is basically taking a smaller set out of a larger set. So here we want to determine whether set A is a subset of set B. And here you can see the notation for that. And whether set A is a proper uh, subset of set B, and here you can see the notation for that. So just in short, looking at the difference in the notation here, this one's subset, this one's proper subset. So in a subset, notice it can be equals. Okay, With a proper subset, it cannot be equal. So let's take a look. Here we have set A is dogs, cats, and birds, and set B is mice, dogs, birds, fish, and cats. So all we have to do to see if A is a subset of B is make sure that every element in A is also in B. So we can see here dogs, cats, and birds. Okay, so since every element in A is also in B, we can say that A is a subset of B. Now the next question is, uh, is A a proper subset of set B? So all we have to do is have at least one other element in B that is not in A, and then it's going to count for a proper. So because mice and fish are extra, we can see that A is a proper subset of B. Okay, let's move on. Number two here, so two and three, but notice four and five are not over here. So therefore, A is not a subset of B, and if it's not a subset, then it cannot be a proper subset. All right, in our next example, here we have some set builder notation. So A is the set of all X's, where X is a resident of California, so all Californians. And then B is X such that X is a resident of the United States, so all the residents of the United States. So we think, are all the residents of California also residents of the United States? Okay, well, California is part of the United States, so we say A is a subset of B. Now we ask ourselves, are these two sets equal? Okay. Or does there exist some residents in the United States that are not in California? So since there are some residents not in California, let's say uh, people in Arizona, we can also say A is a proper subset of B. All right, in our next example, uh, we have some dinner choices here. So set A is pizza, hamburger, and chicken. Here we have pizza, hot dogs, chicken, sausage, and hamburger. Okay, so what do you think about this one here? So I see pizza and pizza, hamburger, hamburger, chicken, chicken. So every element in A is also in B. So we say A is a subset. And what do you ask yourself? Are the two sets equal? Okay, the two sets are not equal, so we have hot dogs and sausage. So since they're a subset that are not equal, we can say we have a proper subset. All right, in our next example, we have the letters W, X, Y, and Z in set A, and W, X, Y, and Z in set B. So the first check is for subset. So we have a W and a W, an X, and an X, a Y, Y, Z, and a Z. So every element in A is also in B. So we say A is a subset of B. And now we ask ourselves, are these equal? Okay. Well, there are no extra elements in B, so they are equal. So A is not a proper subset of B. So when we think of the word proper, in terms of proper subset, proper is going to be smaller. We think of a subset as being a smaller 
uh, sampling of the set. And so if they're equal, then it's not going to be proper. All right, let's move on. So now we want to add in some of our notation uh, from some previous days. So we're going to be dealing with elements, uh, subsets, and proper subsets. So for elements, we're just looking, is that member, is that element in the set? Okay, and so this is three is an element in the set that contains three, four, and five. So that exact thing is there, so we say this is true. Now in this case, we have the set that contains three is an element of the set. Now it is true that you can have sets within other sets. So do you see the set that contains three inside here? I don't see it, so this is going to be false. In this next example, number eight here, we have the set that contains three as an element of the set that contains these four different sets. And because these are exactly the same, then we know it's an element in the set, and we get true. All right, this next one here, this is a subset. So that means every element in, in this set has to be in this set. So a three is in here, so this one's true. And the next one, it's asking for a proper subset. So that means every element in here, in this set, has to be in this set, and they cannot be equal. So I see a three and a three, and they're not equal. So this is true. Now, in this example, we're looking for a subset, and all we have here is the number 3. So the number 3 is not a set, therefore it cannot be a subset, making this one false. All right, number 12. So this is the set that contains nothing, or the null set, or the empty set. And we're checking to see if it's a subset of the set that contains 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we have been asking ourselves if everything that's in this set is in the other set, then it's a subset. But what if there's nothing in that set? Well, it turns out if there's nothing in the set, then we do say this is a subset. So anytime you see the null set, it's always going to be a subset of every set. So you might want to make that note there. The null set is a subset of every set. Now, in number 13, here we have the null set again. It's just the different notation, which I used here. It says the null set is a proper subset of 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, we already know that the null set is a subset of every set. So the only thing that is going to make it proper now is if they are not equal. So is the null set equal to the set that contains 3, 4, 5, and 6? No, they are not equal. So this is true. Okay. So we could make a statement like this. The null set is a proper subset of every set except itself. Okay. Or except the null set. All right, and the last one here, we have the set that contains 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is a proper subset of the set that contains 3, 4, 5, and 6. These sets are equal, and if two sets are equal, they cannot be proper subsets. So we're going to say false for this one. All right, let's move on. Our last example here is talking about the number of distinct subsets a set can have. So the number of distinct subsets, okay, so I'm just going to put it like this, the number of subsets is going to be 2 to the nth power, okay, where this n is the number of elements in the set. Okay, so it's the number of elements in the set. Now, if we're talking about the number of proper subsets, okay, this is going to be the number of any subsets 
minus 1. Okay? And this 1 here that we're talking about is the equal set. Okay? Because an equal set is not a proper subset, we're going to subtract that out of the subsets. Okay, so you got it? This is when we're talking number of subsets, 2 to the nth power, n is the number of elements in the set. The number of proper subsets is 2 to the nth power and then minus 1 at the end. So looking at this one, here we have determine number of distinct subsets okay, for the set boat. So we're looking for this, and we're going to do 2 to the nth power. So what did n equal here? Boat, B-O-A-T, there are four elements there, so 2 to the fourth power. Okay, And this is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so we got 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So there's going to be 16 distinct subsets. Now by distinct we mean order does not matter. So when I go to list all of these, we know we have to have 16 of them. So what I do, I always follow a pattern when I do this. The very first subset I write is the null set because it's a subset of every set. Then I go through and I list each element individually. So we got B, O, A, and T. This might get a little tedious. Uh, my handwriting's not so great either. Then I go ahead and list, um, starting with B, all of the double letters. So we got B, O. <laughs> There's a good match up for you. Um, let's see. We also have... B A and we have B T. Okay, so those are all the double letters starting with B. So then I move on to the next letter, which is going to be O. And I also do all the doubles with O. Now I already did B O, so I don't have to do O B. I'm going to do O A and O T. All right, and then move on. We're going to start with A and do all the double letters to start with A without repeating any. So all we have left here is AT. Now I move on and do all the triple letter sets. So we have um, B, O, A, and B, O, T. So those are all the ones that start with B, O, and then we have one more here. It starts with a B, B, A, T. Okay. And let's see, what else do we have? Now those are all the triples that start with B, so let's move on to O. We have O, A, T. All right. And that would be all of them, because if we move on to A, maybe we can only have two letters there. So then the very last one, is going to be all four letters, B, O, A, and T. Okay. And you'll notice this last set, B, O, A, T, is a subset because it's equal, but it's not a proper subset. Well, let's go ahead and count and make sure we got them all here. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we did get our number of 16 there. And I think we got them all. Now you may have other methods for doing this, um, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you have anything uh, cool that works for you, just let me know, and maybe we can share that with others here. Now, uh, the last question is, how many of the subsets are proper subsets? Well, we were talking about it's all but the equal set. And so we're going to say there are 15 here uh, proper subsets. So that's it for subsets and proper subsets. Thanks for watching.